Hi everybody, it's Diane. It's Friday afternoon and I have a ton of stuff I need to do for this weekend. I've got a couple things going on this weekend. Um, but I'm giving myself an hour to just do something for me, which is just working on the next pair of journals because that's what I love to do. And I get excited about starting a new project every time. And so I just want to get into it. So I'm going to give myself an hour. I've done just a little bit of prep work before I turn the camera on. Um, as I mentioned in a previous video, I'm going to use this kit from uh, Antique Papery. And I have to look up the name of it. I was thinking it was Vintage Dictionary, but I don't think it is because none of these pages have dictionary on them. So I showed the backs that I printed from various digitals in the other video. So anyway, these are the pages I'm using which have an antique look with some pink and um, browns, like a light brown throughout the whole kit. And I'm going to be using this fabric for one cover and this tapestry fabric for another. So I might do a couple videos in this hour. It depends on how long it takes me to, to do this stage that I'm on right now. What I have done so far is I took a piece of, a little piece of thin cardboard that comes on the paper pads and I save them. I have stacks, a stack of them because I've gone through a lot of paper and um, so I, I save these and sometimes I use them to put into the large envelopes that I'm shipping out. If I need to uh, make the envelope feel sturdier, I'll put a piece of this in there. But for now, I'm going to use it for my covers. So, I measured my paper here, and it measures 10 inches wide by um, 8 inches high. So I cut this cardstock 11 by 8 and a half, so I'd have a little bit of room. And you can see how nicely the paper fits in there, and there's room for lace and things around the edges or whatever. You don't want it to go right to the edge. And then I just glued it to the fabric, to the back side of the fabric, and then cut around it. So once this is measured, this becomes your template for cutting your fabric. Unless you want to cut it bigger and fold it over. But I'm going to let the red edges be raw and I'm going to zigzag around it so that'll be fine. So let's just do that. Well, let's finish this book first. For the inside, um, you can see that I used the fabric on the, um, the printed side. And so the white piece is going to be covered with a piece of this fabric. And this, the printed part would show through this. So that's why I'm putting this on the white side. going to put some glue on and it doesn't matter if I get right to the edge because I am going to sew around it. If you don't want to sew around it then you just glue more carefully and make sure you get glue to the edge. I'm going to spread that glue sorry I'm just getting a card that I can spread it with so that it doesn't blob underneath the fabric and show through. Hopefully I'm not <laughs> spreading it so thin that it, it's drying it out. But I just need it to stick enough so that I before I get it to the sewing machine. I'm not going to sew in this portion of the process. That'll be a different video because my sewing machine is, this This setup is not so that I can bring my sewing machine onto and off my surface here. It won't do it. I'm just going to cut roughly around this so I can flip it over and trim it more neatly. I already pressed this piece of cotton. It's just a plain piece of cotton with a pale, pale pink color because the fabric has a pink tint to it. 
the other fabric does not have pink so I will be using a different fabric for the uh, inside. I don't have these journals all worked out in my head as far as what kind of papers I'll be using besides the digital but uh, I just wanted to get started on the covers. Normally um, I do pages before I make the covers but for a, for a fabric cover for some reason I like to do that one first. This would be a smoother cut if you used a rotary cutter, but I'm going to zigzag around it and I think it's going to be okay. All right, now this has some foliage and birds on it, but I'm going to decorate the front and you can see the birds better on the back, which will be left as it is. So you'll be able to see the birds there. So let's do this much with the second book. So here is the tapestry piece that I'm going to use. This is the back side. Look at that beautiful rust color. And these papers will look good with it. So we're going to go with this side, although it looks pretty on that side too. So that means I will be gluing it to this side. And I can make several journals out of this piece of fabric. So you don't need a lot. If you can get some tapestry looking fabrics on clearance, like a remnant piece, I'm sure you could make a journal out of it. You can just size your journal to fit whatever piece of fabric you have. They would make really sweet little um, traveler's notebook journals or even smaller field note size. I just love a fabric covered journal. I'm not trying to line it up with any pattern, although you could. I am going to go have dinner with a young friend today. Didn't know if I'd be able to fit it in my schedule this week, but she's home on her winter break from college, and she has, um, she'll be home through most of January, but she has field work to do, kind of like an intern program, where she spends a work day with someone in her field that she's going for, but she doesn't get paid for it. It's just part of her education. So she'll be busy. So we wanted to get together. So we decided we're going to go have dinner this evening. And then I have my oldest granddaughter coming to spend the day with us tomorrow. So she can we can give her her Christmas gifts, etc. So I have to make food for that. She loves my macaroni and cheese. So I'm going to make macaroni and cheese. And she loves coconut cake. And not very many people in my family like coconut cake. So I'm taking this opportunity to make coconut cake because I like it. Isn't that pretty? That is beautiful. I love that fabric. So I have this piece of uh, cream colored fabric. I don't think it's muslin. I think it's a little heavier than muslin unless there's different types. I'm sure there are different types of muslin, but it's, it's just a plain cream colored fabric. So that's what I'm going to put on the back.
So tomorrow I have to work for an hour or two. I'll probably just keep it an hour tomorrow. They, they say we have to go in and just straighten up the cards on Saturday morning. And uh, so I have to do that and then make macaroni and cheese and coconut cake because I want to make them fresh. I could bake the cake today if I have time and then make the icing because I make a, a cooked icing. I have I make it in my double boiler. And some, it's called seven minute frosting or boiled frosting. And I make that fresh the day I'm gonna serve it. So I have a lot to do before she comes tomorrow and she's coming. She'll be here around noon. So I don't know. I try not to stress out about it. I have to pick up the house too. And then Sunday, this is every other Sunday, my kids come over for Sunday lunch after church. And I was thinking, well, maybe I'll just tell them that this, this week, because this is the week for it. Since I'm hosting for Monica coming down, I've gotten into the cardboard here. Um, but my daughter's off this weekend, this Sunday, and she doesn't have Sundays off that often. So we have to have our family lunch while she's off work so she can join us. So I bought stuff to make tacos, which I don't even eat. But they, everybody else loves them. So like I said, I have a busy, busy weekend. And then back to work on Monday. So that's why I'm taking a little time right now. And it's good stuff. It's all good stuff, you know. I, I'm looking forward to having dinner with my friend, my young lady friend. Um, she goes to my church. I've known her since she was little. In fact, we did a, we were in a sort of a drama, like a Christmas program drama one year, which usually I was, I was usually playing the piano for the Christmas, you know, cantatas and things. But that year I, I had taken some time off from playing the piano for the choir and so I was in the drama and she played my granddaughter <laughs> in the drama so that was fun. She was just a little kid then and now she's in college. And... Alright so I've got these covered. Now what am I going to do? Well I wanted to put an image on the front so I went through a bunch of stuff. That was part of the prep work I was doing before I turned the camera on. I actually have these two photographs in my possession and I made a copy because I thought the colors of that, they look kind of rosy and I thought that would be nice on there and it would. I have so many possibilities here. Um, I made a copy of it. Did I say that? Obviously. You can see I made a copy. Now I, I've misplaced a little piece that I had decided to use. So I had those choices. Um, I have these images that I was sent in a happy mail a long time ago. They're, they're made for decoupage. And I pulled out the ones that had pink tones. And I thought any of those would work. But I kind of wanted something not too big. And I thought maybe, maybe her. And this picture pretty much takes up the whole space. And then I had these, and I don't even know where what digital these are from. But I have those I could use. I had this that came out of a book. Oh, well, here's the piece. But I found, and this is from TaylorMade Journals. Um, and I've been using the images from this vintage photo kit. So I think I'm going to go with this. But it definitely can't just sit on the fabric like that. So what I have to do is build a collage around this picture. So I've got these all these pieces of lace that I've had. <clears throat> Some are vintage. I think this is the maybe this is the only vintage one and the rest I've got in at Hobby Lobby. I'm not sure about this one. I don't think this one's vintage. So I thought I'd start with these and then And then add some smaller pieces.
I didn't know if this would be too much. I have this pleated lace that I never use. I don't know. I really like this vintage one. I love the color of it. This was sent to me by a friend a long time ago, and I've used pieces of it. I like the, the way it looks all tatty up here. Okay, I might go with that for starters. So do I go ahead and cut this really nice lace because I'm going to use it? I say yes. This was sent to me by either Jill or Leslie, I think. Now I need more. This is not the end. What else can I find? Let's bring some more lace over. Oh, I'll get some embroidered bits too, maybe. If I can find them. I don't know, I'm going to surround myself with tons and tons of stuff because I have so much. I'm not sure where the embroidered bits are. Probably in the other unit. I'm just going to go with what I have here. Because if you could see what I brought over here, you'd say, oh, that's, that's enough, that's enough. So I have this lace. Pink, uh, pink lace collar. Isn't that pretty? I might put that there. Um, look at this gorgeous vintage lace. Just a little bit of it there. I'm not cutting things till I know what I want. I have this little bit of stamped muslin. cheesecloth. We'll just layer this sucker right up. I'm wondering about backing her to a solid color piece. I might do that and see how it looks. <clears throat> I'm going to trim a little bit off. I'm going to trim the margin off of the picture. And I'm not sure if I want to leave the printing at the bottom. take that off. Let me look for a piece of cardstock for that.
right, I have some pink and I have some gray. I think that I might like the gray. Yeah, I think that sets her off just right. Forget the pink. I have two shades of gray, but I'm going with the dark gray. Not 50 shades of gray, just two. I knew somebody was going to think that when I said that. <clears throat> okay, so let me get this cut down to size. Looking for my tape gun. It doesn't take long to bury my table. sew around her so I that's why I only put tape down this very center just gonna trim off a tiny bit here so that's probably enough stuff like to layer this on top maybe I'll trim around that netting so I can lay this on top of the picture and I kind of want it to curve around a little bit so I'm gonna cut it right here Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to take a picture of it with my phone, and then when I take it over to my sewing machine, I'll be able to hopefully recreate it. All right. Where's my phone? I don't take pictures very often with this. I use a camera. <coughs> And then after I get all this stuff attached, I'll be able to figure out what I want to do on the inside. So we need to pick out an image for the front of this one. box it has all of my digital um, cigarette cards and calling cards and I just added the uh, tailor-made journals photos to that little box that's always a favorite that one's pretty I'd rather have a lady on it than children oh this one's nice Kind of has more of a sepia look, which would go with the colors there. I might go with that. I don't want gypsies. Not on this one. That one's 
smells nice too. Okay, we'll go with one of those. I don't want one of these. Nope, I want one of those. They both look so serene. I like that one. Now we get to choose the background. I don't want to cover this pattern up too much, although this will be plain, so you'll be able to see it there. So I might not use such a big piece of lace. We'll see. See what I end up with here. Hmm. Those are sewn together. So I could use a seam ripper to take those two those two pieces of lace apart. They were sewn together because I might just want a little piece of that here. That doesn't show up very much, does it? Subtlety is okay though. I hate covering up this part. I really like that lace. If I use that, I'll just cut it off. cheesecloth. All right, I'm going to have to cut this because I can't, I can't figure it out while that's just lying there so big. And if I get it started, it might be easier to cut it apart. But maybe not. Looks like it's just hand stitched, but maybe it's. Maybe it's machine stitched. I won't fuss with it too long. There. I'm going to cut this piece off. Let's 
see, I have this lace right here. And then maybe just a little crocheted something right there. I'm sure I have something small enough, don't I? Yeah. All of my flea marketing has paid off with all these <clears throat> vintage linens and doilies and things. Okay, so I think, I think we're gonna go with this. I'll take a picture. So after I turn the camera off, I will go and sew all that stuff down. It's going to take a minute to do that. Um, but I got out my box of homemade ephemera. I've been doing videos for a while on making, doing stashistries and scrapistries and making ephemera. And then I put it in a box and sometimes I forget about it. So I pulled it down. So obviously I pulled out the ones that I've just made with these vintage photos from Taylor Made Journals, so I might be able to use some of them. I have this, uh, these two cards that are made on index cards. They might work. This is a stamped image layered onto some tissue and coffee dyed paper. Somebody gave this one to me in a Happy Mail. This one I made a long time ago. I think I ought to use it. These are made out of vintage sheets. I love these. I need to use them. This is made out of a scrap of burlap trim. In fact, I don't think I did anything to this. I think this is how it came. I was thinking I sewed this to it, but I really don't think so. I think it came that way. So I could embellish that. These slide mounts I could use. There's some more that I just made. These would be tuck spots. One of these little pockets. There's a glassine envelope that I could use. Library cards, or pockets I mean. These have sprays and decoupage napkins and cigarette cards. This is a little pocket that I made out of a scrap of muslin and some trims. And then I have these little sacks that I made with, with Lorna's images. So I have a lot, not, a, not all of these. It's only gonna be a one signature journal, two one signature journals. So not all of this stuff will fit. This is um, just from an old book, some little perfume decanters. So I just wanted to show you what I found when I went through my handmade ephemera. So I'll be using a lot of that, I'm sure. So I think that does it for here. Um, I have 20 minutes left, so I think I'll move the camera down to the sewing machine and get busy down there. See you in a bit. This might be a, I might post them on two different days though.